Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This guide is going to be the part 3 of my Midlian guide. In addition, it's also the last part. If you watch all three, you will have at least a Platinum's level of knowledge in the Midlian, with just a little practice. A lot of you have been asking about this guide, so let's get into it. This video slash part will be covering the following. Map Awareness, Ward Section, Gank Section, Roam Section, When to Go Back to Base, How Not to Waste Time, Moderate and High Level Tactics, Cheating slash Cheats, mm, kinda, <laughs> What to Do When You're Behind and What to Do When You're Ahead. All of these sections will be covered and have their own unique sexy icon. Map Awareness Section I'm going to be covering the more simple subjects for the mid lane first, that being the map, sorry for the pretexts. Mid lane has to keep an eye out for the following. The enemy jungler. I know all lanes have to, but this is important to ensure you know if you're safe or if the enemy jungler is invading then you will have to react. In addition, if you see him crossing into his wraiths, ping him. So top slash bot know where the enemy jungler currently is. Never assume your teammates saw him at all. I always ping anyone I see when they've been showing up in the map. It helps everyone, not just yourself. Your jungler. It's just as important to know where your jungler is, contrary to popular belief. To know if he's about to gank for you, or if your jungler got into trouble and they need help. Again, very simple, but if you see him getting counter jungled, for example, run to help your jungler. Or if he was caught counter jungling, you can see him, run and help him. Just keep a small eye out for your jungler's movements. Fights near the mid lane. This is normally jungler versus jungler, but it can be a chase fight from top lane. This is the biggest point. Look for a fight near your mid lane at all times. These happen in around 1 out of 4 games around that that you will play, so keep an eye out for them. As they can be game changing, you can turn your top getting chased down the river to a double kill for yourself, potentially winning the game. Now a couple of general things you must do on the map. Call MIA, SS, Miss Ping, but most of you should be pinging. This is vitally important, maybe the most important thing you can do on your map. Don't allow the enemy to roam without your team knowing they are missing. If anyone dies, it is your, yes, your fault if you didn't ping it. Of course, yes, Spotland should have warded, but why did you not tell them? It's still up to you, it reverses round to yourself. It's not the fact that Botlane didn't ward. It's not the fact that top lane was overextending. It's not the fact that the jungler didn't see them. It's your and only your fault. If you don't tell your team the mid is gone, how are they meant to prepare or change their playstyle if they don't know? One miss ping, one, in addition, is just not enough. If and only if you see your enemy going to a certain lane and your bot lane isn't responding, ping down, do a line of pings, if that's what it takes, and a danger sign. Yes, yes, I know it's a little annoying, but no one can ignore such a large amount of pings. Overall, just ping, it really does help. Call RE, return. For some reason, no one really calls return anymore, it was a season 2 thing and it's gone. No reason. RE, or well it stands for return, is the message in the chat that you use to tell your team that the enemy mid has returned back to lane, and they can continue normally and don't have to be as cautious anymore. You can't expect people to check your lane for the return of the enemy mid laner, you just really can't. Tell your team, it's simple, it takes 2 seconds, RE, simple. It means that they can play more aggressively, as they know they are a lot more safe as the mid laner isn't roaming about. It's just good mid lane practice, I personally normally type mid RE just to tell my team. Sorry, I know this section is mostly self explanatory, but god I needed to mention it all. Just do these things, they are good practice and extremely simple to utilise. Ward Section Green Ward Places First up, let's go over the best green ward spots. Here on the left is the map of where you should ward. 
There are four main places where the green ward should be placed. There are others but I won't be naming them as they are very niche. I'll only be naming these four. Number 1. The first is the bush right beside your lane as shown below. This can allow you to see an enemy that will come in from their jungle to the side bush beside the lane. This is not a ward I personally ever use, as you can't see the jungler coming from a loop gank, and you will only get vision of them for the last 2 seconds before they trump into your lane. Of course, this will always catch the enemy mid laner if they try to roam. It's the same regardless on what side you're of on the map, so personally I don't like this. It's an all rounder kind of, and it is good, but it gives you not enough time to react personally. But in saying that, it's also the safest spot you can ward when warding your lane. So safety over effectiveness, it's really your choice. Number 2. The second is a ward inside of this small bush. This will give you vision again of the entrance and will give you a little bit more warning time of the enemy jungler, but won't allow you to see if they're camping in your side bush or if they're going back in it. And it also gives vision, a lot of vision, to the enemy roamer. You can see their rotations for a long time. Again, it's the same on each side of the map, both the blue and the purple. This one is pretty equal in effectiveness and safety. Number 3. The third and my personal favourite is the deep ward inside of the enemy jungle right here. It will give you a massive amount of time to react to the jungler, as it will give you vision of them jungling and where they go. This includes the potential for the ward to spot the jungler going down to bot lane, or knowing if they're going for the red buff. This is why I like it. I like this ward as it gives me vision for another lane, not just mine. It also helps out top lane, or bot lane depending on what side you're on. They can go back in the bush and you won't know, or they could wait it out and you'll never know again when they're at the side bush I'm referring to. So this ward is actually quite risky, although it sures and is a lot better for the team. I like the knowledge it gives to all lanes and my jungler on the enemy jungler movements, but if you're more selfish and you're quite an immobile lane, I would use 1 and 2, pretty much. Don't use it if you don't like the risk, which will be about 80% of people. I play safe personally, so it doesn't matter much to me anyway. So overall, this is kind of unsafe, but helps your team, so it's a choice. Number 4. These two spots are basically the same on each side. This one is great for you and your top, and bot laner depending on your side. This ward is to be placed in the bush beside the wraith camp slash blue buff and can give you vision of the jungler's rotations around it. This spot is dangerous and should only be used to help your team get vision of the jungler in his jungler. Only use this on heavy ganking junglers or if you're extremely mobile and you don't mind about getting ganked like a Cassidin give your team vision. This barely helps you at all to know when they're ganking though, so it's very unsafe. This ward is good but won't give you vision if he comes to your side bushes and you won't know if he leaves, which is a major downside, it's, which is why you're only to use it on extremely mobile or safe champions. I personally only use this blind spot when I have a pink as well for the most part, as all is shown below. Pink ward placements. There are three spots you can place pink wards in. They are all seen below in the diagram. You must put your pinks in these places because people will not see them unless they check. This is the kind of halfway house between pink wards. It's effectiveness and not being found and getting a nice middle ground. This is for an obvious reason, if your enemy jungler finds it, they will obviously kill it. You have to hide these wards. I'll explain each of the ward placements now. The first is as circled below. A lot of people are using this one now and it is the perfect spot, kind of. This spot gives you vision of your lane and your jungler. This also helps your jungler out and is hidden in the bush you won't normally go into for any reason. I like this spot but unfortunately people are clocking on. They are starting to check this bush more and more. 
It's still effective, but one out of three games you won't be able to use it at all. Maybe two out of three if you're unlucky in higher elos. In saying that, it's still a great spot for potential free vision in the laning phase, but it's quite likely to be found. The second. I went over this one in the previous green ward section. It's the deep ward beside the entrance of the river. This is fantastic. Think about it. Whenever would a jungler check this spot really? You don't really check your own spot defensively, not really. Late game sure, but for nearly all of the laning phase, a jungler just won't check it, and you can get away with this pink ward being up. The only downside is that this ward can be seen if the jungler does a rotation for bot to mid or top to mid, depending on your side, and is keeping an eye out. I love this spot and it is extremely viable and less likely to be found. Mwah, perfect. The third. The third is as shown below. It is used on your side defensively. No one really looks in this spot and since it's on your side, most junglers won't go into this bush at all, as it's a bit risky. They're not going to go into your side of the jungle to check for pink wards. It sounds illogical, but it isn't. This is the newest spot people are starting to use and it never ever gets found really. It doesn't provide as much vision for this as your other end, but on the bright side it won't be found. I love this spot and you nearly always get away with it for the most part. So if you really don't like buying pink wards as they always die, use this spot. If not all of the game, you'll pretty much get away with it, unlike the other two spots which are found frequently, the first one being nearly always found. These are the three perfect spots, because they are hidden and will give fantastic vision for any direction in the lane. And because pink wards never die on their own volition, they can only be killed, which means that we must hide them to make them both useful and so they can't be seen, it's really a tough fight between the two. So we put them here to give them a long period of possible, to give us the highest amount of free vision we can get. And in lower elos these won't really get checked as much, in higher elos they will get checked all the time. It's really up to you, I just want to give you all of the pretexts. Basic warding advice. Number 1. Why slash how many green wards should you buy? First up, the trinket isn't enough. Simple. You should always be trying to buy one ward each time you come to lane. You should always be trying to ward each side of the lane for complete safety. So try to buy one and use the trinket for the other side. This is the, well, a tactic most people use. Number 2. Why slash how many pink wards should you buy? I have a general rule of thumb for this. I buy one and place it without, without the enemy seeing me place the pink ward, so they won't just kill it. If the enemy jungler kills it on his first skank as he looks for it immediately, you may buy one more and ward the other end and see if he does the same. Besides that, I'm quite hesitant upon buying any more. Number 3. Keep an eye out for enemy ward placements and tell your goddamn jungler. This is one of my biggest points in the warning section. When in lane, keep an eye out for enemy wards every time they come into lane. How many wards did they get? If they go out of lane, where roughly did they place them? Did a ward get placed? If so, roughly where is it? Tell your jungler these things. This is so goddamn annoying when people don't do this. When you tell your jungler where the wards are, they know how to get around them. Every time one gets placed, tell your jungler. If you do anything in this section, do that. If one is placed, tell your jungler where. And say, oh look, the bot side's been placed. There's no wards in the top. Come round there. Even if you don't get to see exactly where it's been placed, tell them which side. At least, please do this. If you want ganks, a jungler will gank if you give them this information. Please do it. Number 4. Try not to ward in front of your enemy laner. Most important point, well one of them anyway. Coming on from the previous last point, please do not ever, 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 ever show your enemy when you place and where you place a ward. Please just don't do it. Ward over walls are going to push stance 
when the lane's been shoved and go out of their vision and use this time to ward. If you ward in front of an enemy, they will ping where it is, tell their jungler, so their jungler can avoid it, go around the other end and kill you. Or even worse, red trinket it, which means you lose the ward. It's so important, this is unbelievable. Just don't ward in front of people if you ever can help it, I know sometimes it's difficult, but please at least try. Of course this kind of mostly applies to pink wards, but god if you can, don't ward in front of your enemy lane or even with greens. You want them to guess where you've warded, or assume you've warded everything. Do not give them free information, please do not. Warding Tactics the last section in warding, this is going to be covering a few quick, cool little tactics you can apply if you're a cheapskate on wards. Number 1. Cheapskate ward slash ward one side. You can sometimes get away with only warding one side with one ward. Try to buy one ward for your lean and stay more orientated towards that side of the lean. This is an underused point and an extremely good tactic. If you only ward one end or your trinket dies and only one end is warded, stay to that side of the warded area by a couple of feet. This means that if the enemy jungler comes from the warded end, you can see him and run. If the enemy jungler comes from the unwarded end, you can run towards your safe warded area because you're already there a little bit closer. No matter what they do, you have a better chance of getting away. This is shown below. The mid leader runs as the jungler comes from an unwarded end because he's already at that side, the warded end. He's already got a couple of feet on him. When running, the player can see the enemy jungler chasing because it's warded, he's running into a warded area, and he gets away easily. This is a cheapskates tactic. A lot of you low elo people, no offense, only buy one ward, so do this tactic and you'll get away with it a little bit more. And if I'm honest, I use this a little bit more than I care to admit. Number 2. Repink the same spot. Okay, so if the enemy jungler killed your pink quickly, they will assume, I won, he won't do it again, that isn't so dumb. Well, what if we were that dumb. What if we were dumb and rewarded the same spot? Would he check it again? Sometimes, nearly all the time actually, I pink the same spot after someone has cleared it. When most people clear a ward or a pink ward, they put a little ding pick in their head, a little tick mark beside that place. They don't check it again for 20 minutes or if even ever. So try to pink the same spot and see if it works. Some people will not check it again. A note though is that if they do, in fact check it again, do not buy another one and don't do it over and over again. It's try it again and if it fails, leave it. Buy a green ward and admit your loss if they kill the second one. Ganks section. Okay, this section is going to cover ganks. Ganks are normally heavily focused in the middle lane than other lanes, as the mid lane requires two wards to cover the vision on both entrances. In addition, there's a lot of immobiles, uh, they haven't got a support to ward, and top lane is usually tanky as hell. Junglers know about this generally and take advantage of it. A note before this actually begins is that my jungle guide, part 2, is a ganking guide. So it's for everyone, not just junglers. So check it out if you need help ganking. And now I'll get into it, sorry. Helping your jungler gank. Now a lot of you will just let your jungler make the opportunity. Sit idly. Admire the superior craftsmanship of the, you know, jungling champion's weapon. Or admire how summoner's rift grass is kept so short by a horse fiend who is wholesome. This is wrong. You can help them. There are a few things you can actually do to help your jungler in supplying a gank for you. You know, you tip the milkman, so please do these things. Number 1. Not pushing. This is the most obvious yet important thing you can do to help your jungler gank. Clearly, you should not push your lane and kill all the minions, as it means you will have to 
well, you'll push it to your enemy's turret, which would leave them safe under it or force you and your jungler to turret dive. How can your jungler gank safely if you push the wave to the turret? They can't. Most people know this tactic, just don't push. Number 2. Baiting a fight. This is also a great tactic you can use to help your jungler. Try to beat your enemy jungler into a fight, so they will go deeper into your side of the lane and it will take the enemy laner's attention away from the rest of the lane, and maybe even their wards. So this is great if the enemy is normally very intent on their map and see ganks coming, or if they check their wards a lot. They may not check them during a fight, allowing your jungler to get in without the enemy seeing them. This is a big one, but may affect point number 3, which comes in with a little risk. Number 3. Don't blow it. When your jungler is near, don't go crazy. Don't change the stance you were in, or at least keep on a similar stance you were using during the leaning section. So, I see people going into kill stance after being in farm stance the whole goddamn leaning phase, or going passive when they were just very heavily killed. I could go on, you're blowing it. Don't change your playstyle massively, as a normal, a play as normally as possible, pretty much. The enemy laner will see something coming if you go into kill stance as a level 3 Cassidy. Just keep cool and don't radically change your stance, play normal. So in regards to point 2, that means if start slowly edging 2 kill stance, don't just jump into it when beating a fight. Just a pretext. These are the things to note that can help your jungler in their ganks. You have to do one of these three things or a combination of the two if possible. These are the only things you can do to help. Know when the enemy jungler is near. This is actually quite a high level thought process, not every one of you will be able to do this. Only a few rare and talented players can keep logic in place. I'll go over how you can know when the enemy jungler is near. This will make you look like a Jedi. Number 1. Average time the jungler comes round in the first clear. In an enemy's first clear, they will gank at around 315 to 4 415. This means you can play it a little less safe before this time. If the jungler has not shown themselves at this time, it means the enemy jungler is likely to gank mid lane. My personal note time is 3.15 to 4 minutes. This is the time you should be playing extra safe during the laning phase, as it will take the jungler this time to clear and wait and gank. During 3.15 to 4 minutes, relax, don't do anything and wait until the jungler shows himself. If he doesn't, he's sitting in your lane and you know where he is. Number 2. Keep an eye out for changing playstyles. This is your Jedi mind trick. Analyze and remember what type of playstyle your opponent uses. Seriously, this is actually quite easily followed. Not everyone can do it because not everyone uses logic, they use emotion. If the enemy is passive and goes into kill stance and suddenly becomes aggressive, or starts making risky pokes for no reason, this is 80% of the time. This means that the jungler is near and the enemy is feeling pressured to do something. This is actually obvious if you consciously think and look. For a big to mal change in your enemy's stance. Look at this below. You can see the changing playstyle. The laner who is normally passive is running right at them. And this player is backing off because they know. A gank is coming and the jungler is near. The enemy laner blew it and ran at you. It's their fault. Number 3. You can avoid this by just warding. Just saying. Roaming section. Now a couple of tips for roaming in general. Number 1. See rotations. This is a tip to stop enemy roamers which not enough people do. When they push the wave 3 quarters the way up, run down past the minion wave a little bit to see if they try to rotate. You can spot them going into the bush or backing off for a loop gank. This can allow you to tell your laners that they are coming, or sometimes this will even make the enemy laner stay, as they know you will ping your allies back. 
This is a massive point I've literally seen two people ever use. Another good way rather than running at them is toward the middle of the lane. So anytime they start making a rotation, you can just tell your team or your team will see them. This is a good point versus heavily roaming champions, so please do it. Run down and check them out or ward the middle. Number 2. Use Loop Ganks The best gank to utilise in the middle lane is a Loop Gank. Again, it's in my jungle guide part 2 so going over it again is sort of redundant. Look in the timestamps in the description and you'll find it. The reason for this is the accessibility and availability of this gank. You can run through the enemy jungle nearly as easily as you can going through the lane. The difference is that the loop gank leaves you behind the enemy laner. Just a quick point I've mentioned in the jungle guide, I just wanted to mention it again. Number 3. Roam the enemy jungler. A lot of people forget that the jungler can be roamed into easily. If you see a low HP jungler who just finished a gank and is say going for his rates before he goes back, go and get him! The jungler is literally chocked full of little blind spots that can allow you to sneak up onto an enemy jungler and kill him. When to go back to base. There are certain times that you can go back. I'll cover the optimal times to go back but remember these are just general times and going to be covering quickly. They're all self explanatory. Number 1. You killed the enemy laner. Number 2. The enemy is roaming. Number 3. You pushed the lane. Number 4. The enemy is stalling hard. Number 5. Your jungler is covering your lane. And number 6, you're very low HP slash mana and could die easily. These are the perfect times to go back. Never go back if you ever can when the enemy can pressure your turret. Simple. I'm just going to make this section very short as it is very basic. These points don't need much expansion or very much detailed explanation. Thou shall not waste time. This section is going to cover what you should do to refrain yourself from wasting time. In other words, what to do when you're in the middle of the lane and it's pushed. Don't just sit there and waste time, you can do the following. Number 1. Go get the enemy jungle slash your jungle. When it will take the enemy some time to push you back, you might as well go and get your jungle or your enemy's jungle for that matter. From the mid lane you should only be getting wraiths or wolves, nothing else. These will give you a powerful injection of both gold and experience, which can provide you with a huge advantage. This is one of the best possible things you can do. Be careful when taking the enemy jungler stuff though, ensure you're on a champion that can A get away or B is extremely far ahead, or C you know where the enemy jungler is. From here the enemy's jungle is fair game, but for the most part I usually only get my jungle. Number 2. Go back to base. This is the one smart players take advantage of. When they are pushed and you need to go back for some HP, mana, oh you have enough money for an item, you might as well push your advantage. You might as well take this free time to go back to base and get what you need. I have a section on when to go back to base which I just covered and you may refer back to it. Which of course, you know, a pushed lane was part of it anyway. Number 3. Sneakily Ward In the warding section I went over where to ward and I mentioned to do it in a purposely deceptive fashion, meaning it's no real different here. Try to place the ward while being sneaky. The free push time means that you have free time to ward as they don't have vision. The wait low they have been pushed. Use this time to ward. Again, you're starting to see all these sections come together. Number 4. Roam. I've covered this one and it's a good option of course. Moderate to high level tactics. Pretend to base. This is a sneaky prawn tactic. Pretend to go back to base by backing in front of them then cancelling and walking far behind your turret out of their range. Most people will think they're being smart, I'll push so we'll lose CS, or whatever. Around 80% of the people will push, 
They will think you're their little puppet. Just think about it, you've got strings all over them. Once they push, walk back from the fog of war and watch them go red in the face. Now safely CS under turret and you're fine. This tactic works if you're behind and if you're ahead. If behind you want safety, if ahead you want them to push so you're closer to them and you can zone them from CS. And of course they're further away from safety. It just works for all the time, a very simple but extremely powerful tactic. Push and quote unquote roam. This is great when an enemy has a massive minion wave coming their way. Once you've pushed, you want to stop them from getting CS. So, pretend to go top or bot lane as a roam and let them see you leaving the lane. From here, just hide in the safety of the bush and see if they fall for it. The enemy will feel pressured to make a move around 30 to 50% of the time, meaning they will quickly push the wave and get as much CS as possible so they can, you know, pressure the turret so they can roam. This won't work all the time, but for the most part, people push trying to make you lose CS. So once they pushed, walk back to lean and get all your CS. It's the same tactic as before except a little differently and pretending to roam. Push and roam. Wait. This is the same as before but our, our intentions are different. Push and roam in front of your enemy's eyes just as I stated before. Push, walk down to the bush. It even rhymes. Then wait in a bush for your enemy to come and try and follow you. Most people at moderate elos and generally just all round, they'll try to follow you to counter gank a lane. Only do this tactic if you can win a fight hands down. I personally use this with Akali. I push and pretend to roam. Then I wait in the bush for my enemy to uh, follow me. When they come down expecting to counter gank, their you know, vision will be bot lane or top lane depending on where I'm ganking. And when they come into the bush I immediately attack them and at least burn a flash or kill them. Most of the time it's killing. They don't expect the fight you'll automatically win. This is a great way to lure your enemy into an all-in fight and put them out of position immediately. Push at level 1. A basic but extremely effective tactic. I use this tactic a lot personally. If you want an early advantage or kill, you can go into push stance at level 1, immediately walking into the lane and shove the wave and kill the creeps as fast as you possibly can to get level 2 a lot quicker than your enemy. This means you have a massive kill and par peak advantage. Don't use this tactic if you're not planning upon killing your enemy. It will put you out of position and leave yourself open for a jungle gank. But if you do want to kill him and your champion has a strong level 2, push really heavily and as soon as you get level 2, engage on them for the kill. Basic but extremely effective. Want kill and stop them leaving. If you want to kill the enemy, being too aggressive can put them off and just make them go back. Pretend you're playing it safe. Keep some distance and give them some time, actually do just play passively. Make them think, I'm not that low, he's playing kinda safe, I guess I can get this line of CS. This will require you to pretend like you're scared of them. But some people overstay due to this, if you just give them some time, although this seems like a low elo tactic, most people do get a bit jammy and stay for one more wave. Remember you can overdo this, it's hard to act out. Show you want to get CS but you don't want to fight them for it. Don't just back off. Grind down slowly. Similar to the point before with, but with a small change. Grind on your enemy slowly with less than your full rotation. So for example with Rise just 1Q or WQ or with Nidalee only auto attack a few times then go all in. Trick them into thinking that you don't have that much damage. If you do a full rotation, people generally go, whoa, and back off, even if they're decently high HP. But if you're doing small rotations, they're gonna th underestimate you pretty much. I don't even auto attack sometimes to even further mess up their formula if they're very low. It's about ruining their perspective on your strength. Control your laner's position. This is an amazing tactic. You can actually control the position of your laner by controlling your position. As seen below, you can use your ability zone range to shift what side your enemy will walk upon. 
So if you go to the right, your enemy will avoid you and go to the left to have minions to block them. If you go left, your enemy will go right to have a right side of minions to block them. So they have minion aggro. This is shown below and has a lot of uses. For example, if your jungler's on the left, you need them to be more to the left to get your jungler to help them. You can go right to make your opponent go to the left, meaning that they're more open. I'm going to make a quick separate tip, quick tip on this, so you can get more detail than that. But uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. It's very, very, very good tactic. Steal the blue. Start game. This is a risky but very effective tactic. It's also unlikely to succeed, but I sometimes like to try and steal the enemy's blue buff at level 1 if they don't cover the blue correctly. If they don't cover it, you can ward over the wall, like shown below, and wait for the bush, also shown below, until the enemy does a pull. You can wait and try and steal a blue if the enemy doesn't smite it correctly. Even if they seen you ward it, it's still going to put a lot of pressure on the enemy jungler. This is surprisingly good at low elos and can screw over an enemy jungler if they didn't see the ward. And if they did see it, it's still pressure and they still might screw up the smite anyway. Steal the blue. There is also another time that you can steal the enemy blue. The enemy blue will spawn at around 8 minutes 5 seconds if the enemy started at the blue originally. So, before this, you can know that the enemy jungler is about to go for it now. This means that you can steal a blue buff at a lot of its success at about 8.05. If you ward just before this time, you can see them getting the blue and steal it relatively easily. Roam and the enemy returns. This is a big, 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 big point. If an enemy laner has roamed to whatever lane and is trying to return and you would win hands down a one-on-one -on -one fight, hide in one of these bushes, uh, knowing where they're coming down roughly in the diagram for their return. They will want to get back to lean as soon as possible. And if you've pushed it, they will assume you've went back. You don't have to push it, but it helps. Hide in here, usually this bush, until the last second and pop them. This is an amazing tactic to pull off. People never expect to be ganked on the way back from a gank. Especially if your champion is a 1v1 good duelist or a combo based champion like Lux. This is an amazing tactic that works more times than you would expect. It's good to help you snowball and punish people from roaming. Kill the enemy mid of blue. Another blue tactic, sorry. The blue spawns at around 805 if the enemy jungler started a blue. You don't always need to go for the buff, the buff is hard to get. If you're winning your lane, you can sit inside the marked bushes below or just ward the non side of the blue and you can see when the enemy mid laner is going for the blue buff and attacking it. You can ambush them instead of going for the blue and pop them with ease. Remember when people are going for their blue they generally don't think very much or concentrate heavily on the surroundings of themselves. When they do not in this regard take advantage of this and kill them. I've seen myself getting half of my burst off and people not even noticing until they're nearly dead. They assume safety near the jungler. They should never assume anything in this game. This tactic works best on good duelist and combo champions. Wait until they get their burst down, then smack them down. It's all good. Cheating section. First up, this section isn't actually cheating, okay? It's just some of these things are kind of deceptive. And some of it is getting information from external sites. And notice that all of these things are allowed by Riot. I would never tell you to augment, change, install appendages, glitch, or other than that, just, well, generally cheat. Why would you cheat? Cheating's for the weak, just to clear that up. Just uh, so everyone knows what I mean. Lastly, you don't have to do these things. They are kind of unsportsmanly sometimes. And I'm just putting them out there as potential tactics. Some of them are a little scumbaggish, and that's putting it lightly. Number one, LOL Nexus. This is a site. 
I'm not getting paid by them. I don't get anything. Uh, I'm just, I just think it's a good site. <laughs> just a pretext. This site allows you to find out the runes and mastery set that your opponent is using. So you can tell straight off the bat, for the most part, who your early opponent is going to be. Or if you counter them with your runes, as they will have mid lane runes. This can be helpful versus a team that could have multiple mid laner picks, potentially. In addition, you'll be able to tell what rank they are this season, last season, their wins on the account, their win ratio when ranked, and their general KDA for the champion they're currently playing. This can be useful to find smurfs and of course, gauge all of the potentially weak members of the enemy team. In addition, you can also see mastery setups, runes again, and see if they have a weakness in them. For example, they didn't get armor runes versus my Zed. That means I can all in easier. A note is that LOL Nexus is not paying me, again, it's just a good sight. Number 2, base in a bad spot? Another lowly moral base cheap tactic, the cheapest wine in which we all devour. People will always want to stop you from going back, anytime they can, they will go to insane extents. I abuse this by pretending the AFK, then bursting my enemy when they think I'm not ready for it. It's a kind of a cheap tactic, but it works so well. Number 3, pretend to AFK. This tactic is quite funny to use. If your enemy is a good sportsman slash woman, they won't kill you and, well for this they won't die. If they aren't, they're going to try and kill you and kill an FK and in that regard, screw them and kill them. This tactic is only to be used when you can easily kill your opponent and they're standing far away or playing too much in farm stance. In other words, they're losing and you're so far ahead and have so much more HP. So they're playing passively and they're just, you can't kill them because they're being an ant. If you can easily kill them, just step beside your minions and allow yourself to get auto attacked for free and don't move. Just click and allow yourself to automatically auto attack minions. Don't move, don't do any abilities, don't laugh, don't do anything. No matter what, allow the game to choose where you're going to go and let the enemy land some skill shots and don't move. Again, you're ahead, this shouldn't be a problem. After this, the unsportsman player will move in for the kill. Still don't move. From here, you should be far ahead and kill them in one go. Once they've used their abilities, they're going to start auto attacking you, trying to get the kill. At this point, assuming you're quite well ahead, they should have only got half your health in one burst. From here, just kill them. You know, it doesn't matter. They're on sportsman players. I kind of think it's fair. Again, only use this if you're far ahead and can't be killed by their skill shots. The only downside is that they can get a free burst and not fall for it, but I can tell you this is rare. Most people in League unfortunately are sort of greedy on sportsman based players that will go in. It's a free kill, it's solo queue, they will. Teach people to be better sportsmen. Number 4. Lag. I can't move. This is also only to be used if you're very far ahead. The same as before except in chat you say lag I can't move or I can't move FFS, you know whatever. From here, allow them to land some skill shots, auto attacks, again, it'll only take half your health if you're ahead, and uh, they will start testing the water. Once you don't move, they're just going to go in to burst you and auto attack you to death. Once they start doing that, burst them down and kill them. Very simple. A lot of people will always go for this. Number 5. Accidentally type in chat. Coming to insert lean. This again is good to psych out your enemies. When I'm getting wraiths or wolves or the enemy, I've pushed a lot and I'm waiting, I just psych people out. I say coming bot or coming top lane in chat as if it's an accident. Obviously it's not. Don't correct yourself either, just type I'm dumb after you finish the wraiths. As if you just noticed that you done, you type this. Like, uh, all chat, duh. This will make your lane you know, the lane you mentioned, go back and immediately go into, you know, farm stance, play defensively before you come to their lane. They're going to get psyched out. They're going to be like, oh god, he's coming down bot lane. This helps your allies out because they're playing defensively and they get a better foothold in the lane. It's a free mental wreck when gunning your wraiths and makes players lose respect for you, which is good. You make, you want them to think that you're dumb. Number six, start game. Show yourself in another lane. 
At the start of the game you can run up to top lane if your champion could top lane and show yourself at the top turret for like 2 seconds on purpose. Dance in front of it, make it like it's a joke. This will make your enemy think, oh, oh really? Oh, oh really? Lissandra's top? Ryze's top? Okay. People may switch lane due to this and most top laners can't deal with a mid laner. So if they switch, it's your advantage. A small tactic but fun and it works very well versus when you would be good versus a top laner. It's a rare tactic but I've seen it done to much, much success in inter-switchable lanes. Especially if it's like a Riven versus a Malvite. You might want to switch that so, you know, your Riven isn't dealing with a Malvite. Your AP so you can switch. You know, lanes like that. Number 7. I used my insert summoner spell coming to lane. FFS. This is a great tactic so that the enemy don't expect you to have your heal up, your flash up. This is just generally polluting the enemy stream of information. This can go for enemy summoner spell but my personal favourites are heal and barrier so they'll all end you. Flash is also a good example. If the enemy think you don't have heal or flash they may go a little bit more ham than usual or try to all in you early not expecting it only to have you heal and potentially kill them when they're not expecting it. It's a good variable to take out of the equation in your enemy's eyes, only to put it back in yourself at any key moment you choose. And that's it for my cheating section. These are only lowly tactics that can confuse and generally make your enemy weary of you. I've seen this work better than I care to explain. These actually work. I had so much fun doing this section because I had to get clips for them and it was hilarious. I mean, it actually works so well. I couldn't. I knew about these tactics and I've done them a couple of times myself, but I never realized how hungry people are in solo queue. They, they, will, they will kill any, anything. Like, hilarious. Sorry, I, I, it was just uh, too much fun. They work amazingly and they give you a really big advantage. You will be surprised at how many unsportsman based players there truly are. I personally, and I'm not just saying this for video, I don't kill AFKers, <laughs> but a lot of people don't mind it. What to do when you're ahead slash behind. After all of these parts and after you've gotten all of the information from these guides, I'll finally cover what you're meant to do when you're ahead and behind. This is the final section of all of my mid lane guides and uh, I hope you like it guys. First up. What to do when you're ahead. Number 1. Kill the lane's turret. This is pretty basic. When you're ahead and hold control in the lane, this means that you can take the enemy's turret and get your team the gold advantage. In mid lane it's completely fine to take the turret early. When I'm ahead I take it immediately if I can. Number 2. Kill the enemy laner. Probably the most no brainer tactic of all, but god it's the most effective regardless. Just kill your laner over and over again, they can't do anything about it. Number 3. Don't push, stall it. Instead of killing the turret you can not push and stall the lane as much as possible. This means that the enemy who is behind has to come into your zone to get their CS. This point comes on from number 2 obviously. You can kill them if you don't push cause they well have nothing to protect them. They have to stay in CS. And with you and your advantage of being ahead so heavily it means they have to trade and more than likely die to get CS, making their lead or well lack of lead go even further. Number 4. Zone your opponent. Coming on from point 3 you can also zone your opponent if you don't push it. I personally love this one. Stand in front of their minions and zone them even from experience if you can. This completely destroys anyone's morale and will mean they will be screaming and roaring at their jungler for a gank and puts their enemy laner behind so much. Number 5. Push and Roam You also have the option of pushing and roaming. This is more popular in medium to higher echelons of play. You can start abusing your advantage by going into other lanes and spreading your strength. Pretty basic roam stance, but very effective for winning your team at the game, not just yourself. Number 6. Steal the enemy, wraiths and wolves. In this position of par, I normally go and take my enemies, wraiths and wolves if I have the time. 
if it's pushed or something. But mostly wraiths, as it's easier to get away with, I rarely go for wolves. But of course, ensure there are no effing wards before doing this. You're strong, but not that strong. This is a little risky, but worth it if you're kind of ahead, as it puts the enemy jungler behind and you ahead even further. It's all about spreading your strength to put the enemy team behind, not just your enemy laner. A lot of people think of this game selfishly in singular lanes. It's not the case. Number 7. Help your jungler taking the enemy buffs. This is a dangerous power play, but if you can pull it off and deny the enemy mid laner and their jungler their blue and red, they will start getting really depressed. This also puts the enemy laner in a bad mental position as well. It's kind of powerful, this is a really demoralizing tactic and a very good power play. Again as mentioned before, it's about spreading that strength. Ask your jungler, let's go get the red buff, let's go get their blue buff. Just make power plays. Number 8. Buy a blue or red elixir. This obviously depends on your champion whether they're AD or AP. To me this is too risky. To me. I like stacking long term items but I'm a safe player. A lot of people really really aggressive players like to get an elixir if they're really far ahead to further perpetuate their advantage. This elixir can mean winning well, it can turn a winning lane into a stomp lane in many cases. I actually like this tactic, I think it does work if you're good, but uh, I'm too safe, but I'm very safe. I would definitely advise this tactic if you're on a snowbally champion, like you get 3 kills on Zed. You know, get a red pot, why not? What to do when you're behind? Number 1. Back away and let it push. When you're losing, hide behind your turret and pretend to go back. This is again, all these tactics link up. The enemy will push it automatically, even if they don't, their minions will, leaving you with the relatively safe calling of your turret. You can get your wraiths in the time as well, don't waste time, do back off but don't waste time, get the wraiths, get the wolves, meaning that you're safe and gathering farm, getting back into the game, while the minion wave is packing up, coming your way. This is a very good tactic, I'll go into more detail later, but this is a default tactic. Just back off. Don't walk into the lane and go, I'm getting CS. Don't be a little child about it. Just accept that you're way behind and you're going to have to just farm. Number 2. Ask for a gank. This one again is generic. If behind your enemy will be usually overconfident. They will start smashing you about in lane and you're going to be backing off. From this you can get them to go very deep in your lane, a lot of people go into kill stance and can't get out of it. When this happens tell your jungler to come, it's a free gank and a free kill. This is the tactic everyone knows about but is so effective. Number 3. Stall Lillian Deep and CS If you're behind you may consider stalling Lillian Deep in your side of the map so that you may CS a little bit more safely. When it's this deep, most mids won't overextend to try and kill you even more because of the previous point. Just don't push the wave back and you should be okay, it means you can stall it onto your turret and have a little time to breathe and get a few levels and some money. It's all good. If they stay, just gank them, as I've said. Number 4. Don't roam. Well, when I'm saying that, when you're really far behind, don't roam as a general rule. If it's an obvious roam and free kills are just sitting there, says when you're playing TF, obviously go get them, that's different. Please nobody, you know, bounce this argument in the wrong direction. But if not, just sit and farm and lean. Roaming is actually a big risk. Don't take risks that when you need to get safely back into the game. When you're minus six, um, don't roam because it's too late. You're too behind to do anything in another lane. You could die. You're missing CS. You're missing experience at that and when you're that far behind unless they're free kills don't do it just don't a lot of people say you should always roam you should always roam i disagree wholeheartedly sometimes when you're really far behind don't roam just farm number five go and get your own wraiths and wolves when behind you can get your own wraiths and wolves to get back in gold and experience it's important to not get your enemies wraiths and wolves, do not do this, as you could get caught and get even further behind. But getting your own is not a risk at all, so go for it. 
Number 6. Build Resist If you died before your first back, you're starting to lose. You may consider buying MR, like Chalice, or Seeker's Arm Guard if your verse is heavy AD. Obviously, it depends on AD or AP. This isn't always a rule, but it's something you can help assist yourself in stopping getting stomped. I personally nearly always do this if I'm getting hit hard by an enemy leaner, especially if it's a kill lean. If I see a Pantheon, I'm running Arm Guard immediately. Number 7. Don't take the blue buff. Now this one's a little bit introverted, you shouldn't be taking the blue buff if you're really far behind. The reason is, you can lose it, give it to the enemy leaner, making yourself behind doubly so, because you can't keep up with their wave clear or harass. Never take the blue buff if you're really far behind. Anything beyond minus 3, do not take that blue buff on your life. And that's it for the guide, I can't believe I finally got it done. All three parts are complete! This is the trifecta of knowledge on the mid lane. If you can get through all three parts, you literally have maybe a professional level's knowledge in the mid lane. And maybe you even understand the mid lane more than them sometimes. Even though you can play it mechanically as well. I hope you enjoyed this part, and in fact all of them. I know my guides are long and really hard to get through, but in the end I hope it's worth it for you guys. I really worry sometimes that the time barrier is too much for people. That's why I sped up my pace of speech in this, well, video. But regardless, if you like it, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. If you like me, sub. If you don't like me, unsub. And if you think my fan standards are falling, unsub. Uh, if you think it can help, I would really, 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 really appreciate the share. Uh, sharing is the best thing you can do for me, guys. And I really, really do appreciate it. And uh, that's it, guys and gals. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.